There's no plan B, because there's no planet B. Yet by 2050, 200 million people could be displaced by climate change. Are we prepared for the largest migration in human history? Who will be the climate refugees? Will they be welcomed with open arms or met with closed fists? And in the face of mass migration, will humanity finally unite to fight the real enemy, climate change, or crumble under the weight of its own divisions? Let's find out by answering each of these questions throughout the video. In the past hundred years, the world's weather has been changing a lot. We've seen more extreme events like hurricanes, heat waves, and droughts. Remember Hurricane Ian? Its fury ripping through Florida in 2022, displacing thousands and leaving a trail of devastation. Imagine that intensity becoming the norm, not the exception. Climate change is fueling extreme weather events like this, with 2023 seeing deadly floods in Europe, where Germany alone faced 4.9 billion euros in damage and tragic loss of life. As per the European Commission, climate change has caused over 145 billion euros in economic losses in the EU over the past decade. Just think about all the schools, hospitals, or important projects that could have been funded if these losses hadn't happened. Think of Australia's Black Summer fires in 2019 to 2020, scorching millions of hectares and displacing countless communities. Imagine that horror multiplied across continents, with California's Dixie Fire in 2021 offering a glimpse into a future where entire regions become tinderboxes, forcing mass evacuations. You'll be shocked to know that heat waves already kill more people than those who die as a direct result of violence in wars. So as you can see, no continent is safe from the horrors of nature's onslaught, and future predictions ring more warning bells. Experts predict that if things keep going as they are, Earth's average temperature could go up by 1.5 degrees Celsius sometime between 2030 and 2052, compared to before factories and machines were around. This might not sound like much, but it's enough to cause big problems for ice, plants, and animals, and the way we grow food. Among all the challenges we face, one looms large, the global refugee crisis. More and more people are being forced to leave their homes every year. By 2021, the number reached 89.3 million, doubling what it was a decade ago. By 2022, it rose to 100 million, with climate disasters displacing even more people than conflicts. For example, floods in Pakistan displaced 33 million people, while millions in Africa suffered from drought and the threat of famine, stretching from the Horn of Africa to the West Coast. If that wasn't enough, a study from 2020 warns that by 2070, depending on population growth and warming scenarios, one to three billion people are projected to be living in areas with climate conditions that have not historically been hospitable for humanity over the past 6,000 years. Now, if you're enjoying the video so far, I invite you to like it and subscribe to the channel. Climate change-induced migration can affect various regions worldwide, but some areas are expected to experience more significant impacts. Regions like the Pacific Islands, Bangladesh, and parts of Southeast Asia are highly vulnerable to sea level rise and increased storm surges. Coastal erosion and inundation threaten livelihoods and force communities to relocate to safer areas. For example, residents of Tuvalu, Kiribati, and the Maldives are already considering relocation due to rising sea levels. You know what's worse? The Indonesian capital of Jakarta is home to 10 million people, but it is also one of the fastest sinking cities in the world. If this goes unchecked, parts of the megacity could be entirely submerged by 2050. Similarly, Africa is the worst hit. Countries like Somalia, Sudan, and Nigeria are experiencing conflicts and displacement exacerbated by resource scarcity and climate change impacts. Additionally, Lake Chad, a vital water source for millions, has shrunk significantly leading to displacement and competition over dwindling resources. Besides the Pacific Islands mentioned earlier, small island nations in the Caribbean, such as Haiti and the Dominican Republic, are susceptible to hurricanes, flooding, and soil erosion. So data suggests that most of the climate refugees would be from the global south. And the irony is that the global north generally has higher per capita emissions and greater overall emissions due to their higher levels of industrial activity transportation infrastructure, and energy consumption. But the question lies, will the world or the global north in the coming future accept climate migrants with open arms? 
An analysis of the present situation might give us a peek into the future. Currently, many countries, such as the UK, are accommodating climate refugees. In 2020, the UK received 8,400 migrants, which has skyrocketed to a staggering 40,000 in 2022, with numbers continuing to rise. A significant portion of these migrants are fleeing climate-related issues. While it's admirable to offer refuge to those displaced by environmental disasters, the influx of migrants is posing challenges for the UK. Unlike traditional conflicts, these migrants arrive not on warships, but in flimsy boats across the English Channel. Their aspirations both fragile and determined. This unchecked migration is straining the UK's already burdened systems, grappling with high housing demand, elevated crime rates, challenges in education and healthcare, and rising grocery prices. It's disheartening to witness many of these migrants facing hardships, with some stranded in airports, others deported, and many exploited. Consider the consequences if more migrants continue to flock to the UK in the near future. It could potentially exacerbate an already precarious situation, turning into a crisis of its own. Just like Britain, this present-day migrant crisis spills to the United States as well. Many U.S. cities are feeling the impact of climate migration. Take Chicago, for example, a sanctuary city where local authorities can choose not to enforce federal immigration laws. Around 20,000 migrants were transported there from Texas, putting a significant strain on the city's resources and finances. Texas itself is grappling with its own migrant challenges. New York City is facing a similar situation. Since 2022, Mayor Eric Adams has been vocal about his concerns regarding the arrival of over 110,000 migrants into the city. He's warned that the sudden influx could have negative effects. Thus, looking ahead, it seems unlikely that climate migrants will receive a warm welcome in the U.S. So what can we do when it seems the world is ill-prepared for such migrations? Many countries, especially in the developing world, lack strong natural disaster response systems. A coordinated global approach is necessary. The conversation around migration often revolves around what should be allowed rather than preparing for what will happen. Nations must shift from merely controlling migration to effectively managing it. This includes establishing new avenues for legal economic labor migration and mobility, as well as better protection for those fleeing danger. There's a suggestion to offer everyone an official form of United Nations citizenship alongside their birth citizenship, especially for those born in refugee camps or citizens of small island states facing extinction due to climate change. This could ensure international recognition and assistance, though citizenship is a basic human right. Political theorist David Held argues that we've outgrown national boundaries due to globalization, and it's time to form a cosmopolitan democracy at a global level. We need new global cooperation to address the scale of the climate crisis, potentially through new international citizenship and global bodies for migration and environmental management. Currently, the United Nations lacks executive powers over nation states, but this may need to change to effectively combat climate change and restore biodiversity. Global governance could help coordinate the growing mobile workforce, perhaps through an international quota system. However, challenges like bureaucracy, corruption, and corporate influence must be addressed. So what are your thoughts on the climate-induced migration crisis? Will the Global North welcome the climate refugees? Do let me know in the comments. Like the video and subscribe to the channel for more updates. And watch our video on will President-elect Javier Millet have to eat his own words after having mentioned during the campaign that he was not going to do business with China.